guys welcome back to my video in this video I'll be showing you how to build a calculator that can add multiply divide and subtract but it doesn't have the same structure as a calculator you'll see what I mean just keep watching and you'll see also if you don't mind please drop a like and subscribe it would really help out my channel a lot anyways let's hop right in so first I got my boilerplate code this is basically the code that I start with every single time. Next, I'll, I'll create two inputs. So I'll just, first I'll create a div, call it container. Well, I'm not gonna call it anything, just leave it blank. Next, I'll go in the div and create a form tag. Inside of that, I'll create an H1 tag. I'll call it multi-operational operation yeah operational calculator underneath that I'll create a label tag and give it an ID of first number first number then input give it a class of input ID of num1 and a placeholder of enter your first number sorry if my editor is kind of small I just had to make room for more um, you know more room to type and then I'll, I'll create two BR tags so BR times two label ID equals second number. This is basically the same thing as the first one, except it's the second one. Input class equals input. ID equals num2. Placeholder equals enter your second number. Let's see how it looks. Oh, whoops. That's not what I wanted. Wait, yes, yes, that is. Never mind. So that's what we have so far. Next, I'll create a drop down menu by typing select ID equals choice. Choice. Inside of that, I'll create two options. I meant four options value equals add minus multiply divide and inside of this I'll type out the same thing that I gave the value of it multiply minus add Okay, so now we have our drop down menu. It has add, minus, multiply, and divide just as we had specified. Now we'll create a div which will display the result of the calculation. So display result button ID equals compute button calculate okay we have our button we're done with our HTML now it's time for some CSS we'll give the background of the browser a weak color so body background color wheat Okay, now we have this yellowish wheat color. Underneath that, we'll style the all the inputs, which is why I gave these two a class of input. So I'll give it a border radius of six pixel, border one pixel solid black. 
then I'll do div nth child, which will style the first div if I put one, but if I put two, it'll style the second div, the div right after it. But since I didn't give this div an ID, I have to do nth child. Okay, so I'll give it a position of relative and a height of 300 pixels, width of 60%. Display flex border one pixel solid black. Wait, okay. Then I'll do justify content center margin auto align item center. Then top. 240 pixel box shadow 0, 0, 012 pixels background color white. Okay, now it's centered and everything is in the center of this white rectangle. Now we'll style our result div. So display result. Let me zoom back in a little bit, like that. Font size, 60 pixels. Position, relative. Left, 170 pixel. And then we'll style our first number. Whoops, number, not number. Font size, 30 pixel margin 10 pixel and then we'll style our um, our input of our first number so we'll do that by doing first number comma ID num one margin 10 pixel then I'll do I'll style the second number. I'll give it a font size of 30. 30 pixels. Then, second number, num2. This is basically the same thing I did for the first number. I did that comma notation. Margin, 10 pixel. Num1, position relative, left 32 pixel, input, posi I mean not position, height, height 30 pixel, and then we'll style, um, what else, our heading, yeah. Position relative bottom 60 per pixel left 120 pixel okay and then for the label whoops let me do that one more time label font family Arial Helvetica Sans Serif. And we're done with our CSS. Time to move on to the JavaScript. Hope you guys are following along so far. This is a long project. So we'll start we'll store our button in a button variable. So document.get element by ID. And the ID of our button was um, compute button. I'll just copy and paste it so I know I put in the right ID. And then I'll do button.addEventListener. It'll listen for a click event. 
then func function parenthesis var final result equals document dot get element by id display result var operation choice equals document dot get element by id choice dot value var num one equals document dot get element by id num one I'll just copy and paste this down and just change the rest of it to two. So num num two and this is num two as well. Then I'll do num one equals num one I mean number num one dot value. What this line is doing is it's basically going to convert num1 into an actual number, into a real number, like an integer. Because if we don't do that, num1 will just come out as any and not a number. That's what the browser will think of num1 as. We'll do the same thing for num2 to make sure they're the same. Dot value. Final result. Dot style dot color equals red if operation choice equals equals add then we'll do final result dot enter html equals num1 plus num2 the rest of the else if statements are pretty straightforward just do operation choice equals equals minus final result on inner HTML equals you guessed it num1 minus num2 it's really simple after this else if operation choice equals equals we have multiply okay multiply final result dot inner html equals once again you guessed it num1 times num2 our last one else if operation choice equals equals divide final result dot inner html equals num1 divided by num2 Okay, we're we're done with everything. So now let's see if it worked. I'll put ten and then ten. It should yes, okay, it works. Ten plus ten does indeed equal twenty. How about ten times ten? Should should be a hundred, yep. How about twenty and seven? One forty? Okay. Should be 27. Whoopsie.